Hi everyone, welcome to Solar Integrations. In today's video I'm going to digress a little bit from my normal home assistant and inverter integrations to something which I think is quite important from a safety perspective. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about um, earth neutral bonding. Um, what is an earth neutral bond on your inverter? Um, some of the symptoms that some of you may experience um, if your earth and neutral aren't bonded together. Um, why it's important that your earth and neutral are bonded together. Um, what the implications are of your earth and neutral not being bonded. And um, how to test if your earth and neutral are bonded together. And then finally, um, if your earth and neutral aren't bonded together, what you can do to get that sorted out. Um, I hope that you find the video um, useful. Earth neutral bond is normally provided by your electrical services provider, um, ESCOM in South Africa's case. Um, they bond the earth and neutral together so that there's no voltage difference between them and they, uh, that is supplied to your house. The problem occurs with the inverters when you are disconnected from the grid and the earth and neutral are no longer bonded together. If you have flickering LED lights or if your uh, earth, uh, earth leakage is tripping out when you disconnect or reconnect to the grid, um, those can all be symptoms of an earth leakage problem with your inverter. I believe that the reason that we're seeing a relatively large number of installations being done without the earth neutral bond on the SunSync and DAE inverters is because these inverters operate in two different modes. Um, the first mode is in a grid, grid attached mode where the inverter syncs to the grid and uses the grid's earth neutral bond and the second mode that, it, uh, use it, uh, that the inverter does is an island mode where when the grid goes down the inverter needs to make its own earth neutral bond. Um, most of the uh, uh, cheaper inverters work in only island mode. Um, they can be powered from the grid but their frequency is not linked to the grid and as a result they bond their own neutral permanently. Um, they have no uh, mode in which they are not earth neutral bonded and um, as a result the installers who are used to installing those inverters when they install a sunsink or a day they're not aware that the inverter needs to be earth neutral bonded and um, haven't been taught to do it that way so i think that is the primary reason as to why the in, the installers sometimes don't aren't putting those uh, earth neutral bonds in place I don't think it's possible for the SunSync and Days to come with uh, Earth Neutral in place because the regulations, the local regulations vary from country to country as to how they want you to do the Earth Neutral bond and as such they have to leave it up to the installer to do the Earth Neutral bond for them that complies with the local regulations. Our house's electrical systems are designed to have the earth and neutral bonded together. All of the safety systems in our electrical circuits are based on having a live with a uh, voltage of 230 volts and earth leakage on the live circuit, on the live side of the circuit. Um, any voltage which is being um, leaked out from the live conductor to earth gets detected by the earth leakage and um, and will trip the system. Um, if you go over current on the live side, the circuit breakers will um, uh, trip out and that will stop you from uh, from having a, a short or something like that on on the the live side. The problem with um, not having the earth and neutral bonded together is that the neutral can develop its own voltage. You can get uh, a, what they call a floating neutral and you can get a shock from going from neutral to earth which is not normally possible if your earth and neutral are bonded. So um, on the, the neutral to earth 
pathway. There is uh, no protection for you. There's no earth leakage. There's no circuit breakers or anything like that. And that is why it is dangerous. Okay, so I'm going to just show you two quick ways to test for your um, earth neutral bond. Um, the one is using a device which you can purchase. Um, you can get them from uh, Take A Lot or one of the other uh, online retailers or in a hardware store. I'll post a few links for that. And the other is a, a bit of a do-it-yourself. You'll need a three-pin plug and a multimeter to do that. If you do want to do that, please bear in mind that um, you are dealing with live electricity and it's uh, important to take any uh, necessary precautions to make sure that you don't get electrocuted uh, doing it that way. But I will show it um, uh, to you for, uh, for, uh, for interest sake. Um, if you're at all unsure, um, I suggest that you get the, the plug tester for that purpose. Okay, the first way we can test is using a device like this over here. Um, we plug that in to our plug and there we can see we've got um, two LEDs on. The third one is off. The third one indicates if there's any, um, the one on the left indicates if there's any power between earth and neutral. If that lights up, then um, there is power and there's a problem. Um, you've got a floating neutral um, and it's got a little a little uh, diagram there as to how everything works and you can usually test the earth leakage as well. So what you want to do is go and turn your inverter off and see if that changes at all. If you turn it off and you've got a light appearing over there, it means you've got a floating neutral. Okay, this is just a quick video on how to check for a floating neutral. On your um, on your inverter I've taken a three pin plug here that's the uh, earth over there neutral and live um, you don't want to be plugging this in when it's like that because you if you touch any of those terminals if you touch the live terminal and uh, you're gonna get a shock and it can kill you so you don't want to be doing that what I've done is I've drilled three small holes in the top of the plug like that that is now plugged on there and I can't touch any of those terminals. Um, I can plug that into my, into my mains like that. Um, you need to remember that when you plug this into the top of the cable, you're going to, into the top of the plug, it's going to be 230 volts. If you have a look over there, there I've got 230 volts. If I want to check my, um, that my neutral is, uh, ground is to earth. I can put that in over there and there you can see I've got um, 0 0.13 volts going through. So my earth and my neutral are bonded. If I now disconnect my inverter from the grid, I can check that my earth and neutral are bonded when I am disconnected from the grid. So what do you do if your earth and neutral aren't bonded? Um, I would, the first thing I would do is speak to my installer and get my installer to come and uh, fix it for me. Um, there's two ways that they can do that. Um, the one is using a contactor or a relay, which will automatically, when the inverter disconnects from the grid, connect the earth and neutral up together. And then when the inverter reconnects to the grid, um, disconnect that bond. Um, the other way is a hard bond where you have a permanent uh, piece of, uh, permanent connection between your earth and your neutral in your uh, DB. Um, both ways are open to debate as to how much they comply with the local regulations. I'm not sure which is the correct way. I would go with whatever your, your uh, installer uh, recommends. I hope that you found my video informative and useful. Um, if your system is not earth neutral bonded, I would urge you to speak to your installer or reach out to someone else on the Facebook groups or on the power forum that can do it for you. Um, it is important that you get that done. And um, I look forward to your comments down below. And uh, please like and subscribe if you're not subscribed. It does help my channel and I appreciate the support from the community.